Hello, Sigma, you wide-angle, blurry background M-mount lens. I've been dreaming about you. You look just as good on my Canon M50 as I imagined you would. I love you, but I can't keep you all to myself. So it's time to share you with the vlogging world. Friends, the brand new Sigma 16mm 1.4 aperture M mount lens has just been released for the Canon M50 and it is a game changer for vlogging. And in this video, I'm going to dive deep and tell you why. I'm also going to review the lens, show you plenty of sample test footage and photos, and explain why this lens might have moved the Canon M50 into the top slot for best vlogging cameras in 2020. This is huge. This lens is very unique and its release is very exciting. Can you tell I'm excited? Hi friends, I'm Alicia and this is AMA TV where I help you level up your travel vlogging skills. And one of the questions I'm continuously trying to answer on this channel is, what is the best vlogging camera on the market right now? Every camera has its pros and cons, but when it comes to the Canon M50, one of my favorites, one of its previously existing cons has just been eradicated by the release of this lens. But before I get into the full setup with the M50 and how it all works together, allow me to simply tell you all about this lens. Also so do know that this lens and all of the gear I mentioned is linked in the video description below and on the blog at ama.tv. They are affiliate links and I greatly appreciate it if you use them to make a purchase. It's at no extra cost to you and it does help to support the channel so I can buy more gear to review and test for you. So the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 aperture EFM mount lens was released as part of a trio of lenses in Sigma's contemporary line. There is a 16 millimeter, a 30 millimeter, and a 56 millimeter, which is more like a portrait photography lens. They're available in Sony E mounts, Micro Four Thirds mounts, and now Canon's M mounts. It's priced at about $450 and it weighs just 0.89 pounds or 14.29 ounces, which isn't tiny like a little pancake M mount lens, but it isn't huge by any means either. Trust me, lenses do get bigger than this. And the thing that makes most Sigma lenses special is the huge aperture, in this case, a 1.4. Now there are two main reasons that a 1.4 aperture is so desirable and so delicious. First is the shallow depth of field. This means that the area of image in focus is going to be much smaller than if the aperture were set at a higher number. You can see here that only this small part of the image is actually in focus when set at the 1.4 aperture. It's crazy. The shallow depth of field allows you to rack focus between background and foreground and creatively highlight one or the other. You can also capture some gorgeous bokeh because who doesn't love gorgeous bokeh? You can also create a blurry background which will really help your subject stand out from the background. It becomes less important what the background even is because if it looks like a mess, you could just blur it out. This is the cinematic look that is gonna help your footage look far less amateur and much more professional. One small note is that you will need a neutral density filter on this lens if you actually want to shoot outdoors in bright lighting at the 1.4 aperture. So the filter thread on this is 67 millimeters and I will link below to the neutral density filter that I use. And I can also make a video explaining more about that technique. If you'd like to see it, just leave me a comment and let me know. The second reason you need that 1.4 aperture is that it will save your footage in low light conditions. And by low light, I don't mean creeping around the woods at night. Sometimes it's just regular household lighting that isn't quite bright enough for your lens because most household lighting isn't. That's why we have studio lights. This low light stuff has become so important to me with a kid in the house because I want to film her constantly, but I sort of have to work with in the moment household lighting. If I didn't have the 1.8 aperture here on the Canon G7, an X, this would all just be way too dark. This also very much applies to travel vlogging, like we're talking interiors of hotels, public transportation, inside of restaurants, just being out in the evening wanting to film things going on around you. It's one thing if you're in Paris with street lights all around you at night, but it's quite another if you're in Southeast Asia with less electricity overall to light the streets after sunset, or if you're camping, what are you gonna do if you're camping? You need good low light. If you were using, say, the M50 kit lens with a 3.5 aperture at the widest, it simply wouldn't deliver much of a shot unless 
unless you were out in bright sunlight or like near a window in an interior or if you were in actual studio lighting. And of course, if you've watched any of my videos on the best camera settings, then you know that jacking up the ISO is one way to add more light, but it really is just light that damages the image, giving it this splotchy stuff known as noise. So you always want to keep the ISO as low as possible if possible, and guess what? This lens makes it possible. So the other thing about this lens that makes it so unique and perfect for vlogging is the wide 16 millimeter focal length. So if you're vlogging on a crop sensor camera, you're going to need a focal length of at least 18 millimeters to fit yourself in the shot at arm's length. Using a gorilla pod or some other hand grip will give you a little bit of extra length, but forcing the camera as far away from you as possible really isn't fun for your arm. And when your arm isn't happy while you're vlogging, it's very hard to concentrate on what you're saying. So the 16 millimeter is going to give you plenty of room in the shot, and it's going to give you that slightly more pro look that a wide angle lens delivers right before it becomes a fisheye. It's the sweet spot. And the thing about this lens is that prior to its release, there really was nothing else like it on the market for vloggers. And to quickly define vlogger, I'm generally referring to someone who is not creating a professional production for a client. So there's no set, there's no studio lights, nothing's controlled. Um, there's no reshooting of scenes over and over again or directing talent. They're just out in the world filming and hoping that everything works out and translates to their camera well. And I also speak about travel vlogging, which of course requires lightweight, portable gear, which is also somewhat inexpensive, ideally. And now that I'm a travel vlogger turned mom, I'm really seeing a lot of parallels between the wild, weird, unpredictable nature of traveling and the wild, weird, unpredictable nature of kids and their movements and actions and all the stuff you have to carry around for them. So you can't really carry your own gear and you certainly can't direct them. Oh no, they're going to do their own thing on camera. So I can see how a lot of travel vlogging issues can really apply to mom and dad vloggers as well. I'd also say that if you're a vlogger, you're going to likely tell your story in part using that classic vlogging shot that we talked about, which is why you want the 16 mil, but it shouldn't be your only shot. Hopefully you're also shooting the environment, some close-ups, and some other just creative additions for your vlog. So you probably want a lens that doesn't do it all, but does at least a few different types of shots. I certainly did. In fact, I've been dreaming of these exact specs on a lens for a very long time. So when one of my AMA TV viewers told me about the release of this lens just a few weeks ago, I immediately ordered it. So thank you to MDG Collections. He also loves this lens and has created some videos about it that you can check out if you'd like to see more examples made with this lens. So let's rewind and talk about why the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens is a game changer for vlogging cameras by considering a video I created in early 2019 comparing the Canon M50 to the Canon G7X Mark II. Here is a chart where I awarded stars to each camera for winning in each category. And when it comes to low light in the video, I state that the M50 is simply never going to give you that bright shot or that blurry background shot with a wide angle lens the way the G7X Mark II will because a detachable lens sporting both of these features simply did not exist. This is especially true of the M mount lenses, which are the lenses actually designed to work on the Canon M50. It's kind of the point of having a mirrorless is being able to use smaller lenses with your smaller cameras. So there were options for bigger EF or EFS mount lenses, but even at crazy sizes and prices, there was nothing that compared to the retractable lens built into the G7X Mark II. That's why it's such a popular camera. Although of course the G7X Mark II has its own shortcomings like lack of audio input and dual pixel autofocus. And then the Mark III is this whole other story that's been well documented on this channel and I won't even get into it. So essentially there was no perfect vlogging camera. That's why I'm always trying to answer that question, but there really is no answer. However, now that this lens has arrived on earth, it really ties these two cameras, the G7X uh, Mark II and the M50 in this low light category, which in my opinion pushes the M50 into the winning slot overall. So I actually have chose a winner going back on that video because of this lens. Although when I made that video, I didn't have a winner. It was kind of a wash. So now, according to this chart, the only categories left where the G7X actually wins is in price and in size. So I think now overall, the Canon M50 paired with the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 aperture lens is the best vlogging camera on the market. And it's definitely the best one made by Canon. So let's unbox the lens and get started on some low light tests. Oh my God, here's the box. We're gonna unbox it. I know you have knives out here. Yes. I also wanna show what low light, this isn't super low light, but what low light looks like. This is the kit lens on the M50. So this is 3.5 aperture. With the ISOs at like 3200 right now. 
But this lens, 1.4. Sigma 16mm f1.4 DC DN. Boom. Great. Open it. Da -da -da. Okay, so we're going to put it on. We're going to see the difference right here. <laughs> Look at that difference. Look at that difference. Wow. So because it's 1.8, <laughs> I got to lower the ISO to 500. So that's what that's where your difference is really going to be. And the difference is going to be in the background blur. Oh yeah, I can see a difference. Look, he's all blurry cuz I'm here and he's there and it's a 1.8. Cheers. So it's the sun is set. The 500 ISO is not going to work anymore. So. But now we're going to take the ISO back up. Oh wow, because it's like it's bright. Uh, dark out here. It's brighter than real life. Look how bright we are. Yeah, that is bright. Now, if I were to push the M50 to the max on ISO, it's at 12,800. 12, <laughs> I usually don't even mess with that number of ISO, but I mean, it looks like it's still daylight out and it's literally dark. And of course, this situation isn't the best demonstration of the beauty of this lens. This is just a situation that you can actually get a shot when you might not be able to otherwise. You definitely wouldn't be able to otherwise with like a 3.5. I'll throw that back on and we'll see what it looks like out here right now. Okay, so here again is the M50 kit lens and that's at 64. I'll max it out and that's at 12.8. That's all we're getting. Yep, the Sigma is preferred. So this lens seems pretty perfect, but what are some of the issues or concerns surrounding it? There's gotta be something, right? Well, there's always price to consider. The Sigma 16 millimeter is $450. So if you buy the Canon M50 kit, it's about 600. The body solo is only $20 less. So you might as well get that kit lens for zooming. And then this full setup together is going to be $1,050 at the time of filming. And that price is likely to drop soon, but that's still not a lot for a camera. The G7X is still $600. The Sony RX100 point and shoot is up to like $1,300. The Sony a6400 body is almost $900. And if you pair the same Sigma lens made for Sony, you're looking at $1,300 total. That would be the most comparable Sony setup to this Canon M50 setup, but this is Canon coming in at 1050. So really, I think the value is there. Another issue might be the lack of internal image stabilization in the lens. Many Canon lenses do have IS built in, so not seeing that as a feature is a little bit alarming, but I spent the weekend testing it out and filming our Christmas preparations, and I decided it really wasn't a big deal. I thought it was comparable to what I'd usually get with this camera with a Canon IS lens. So let's take a look. So here's some raw footage I shot in what I'd consider vlog style, just capturing precious family moments. The stabilization isn't perfect. Obviously we're not on a gimbal here, but is it good enough for a vlog? I think so. Another thing about image stabilization on a lens this wide is that it is naturally more stable because the lens is wide. So lack of internal IS on a long lens is going to be a much shakier situation than a 16 millimeter with no IS. It's almost like, not that you don't need it, I'm sure it would be great to have it, but 16 mil is wide enough that it, it works just fine without it. And to further illustrate the lack of IS in this lens being a non-issue, I invite you to visit the only other full review of this lens that I know of, which was done by a guy named Todd Domini. So Todd compares side by side the stabilization on this lens to his Canon 11 to 22 millimeter, which does have built in IS. And he also concludes that there is not much of a difference. I think that overall the stabilization in this lens is as good as it gets on a handheld camera when you hold the camera properly. And I do have a video that gives you guys some tips and tricks on how to best hold and maneuver a camera for the ultimate stabilization that you can acquire with handheld shooting. So in conclusion, the lack of IS is absolutely no reason not to buy this lens. Also, especially now that we live in the world of affordable gimbal Gimbals. And let me just say that I have been working with one very special gimbal that you see here. It is small, compact, budget friendly, and works with this camera and lens setup so well. This gimbal paired with the M50 and this Sigma 60 millimeter 1.4 lens has made all of my vlogging dreams come true for less than $1,350 total, which is not a lot of money for this level of quality video. So I would love to talk more about the gimbal right now, but I'm going to save that show and tell it for the very next video. So subscribe if you haven't already, hit that notification bell, so you will be the first one to learn about the new video uploads when I create them. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment what you think about this lens. Are you going to get it? Are you going to get it? You should get it. It has been my favorite purchase of 2019. This lens and the Rode Wireless Go mic, this guy right here. 
my two favorite things all year, best things all year. Actually, I think about the M50 this year as well. So three best things. Yeah, it's a good buy. Let me know what you think about it either way. All right, guys, I'm Alicia and I will see you next week. Bye.